This AI summary of Dr. Jordan Peterson's podcast features a conversation with professor and researcher Dr. Peter Arcidiacono discussing a Supreme Court decision ending race-based affirmative action and the role of merit in success. The two examine how affirmative action, originally devised to aid underserved ethnic communities, has now morphed into a system that often penalizes certain groups, most notably Asian applicants. Arcidiacono, who served as an expert witness for two court cases examining how racial preferences impact university admissions, got unprecedented access to Harvard's complete admissions data for six years. He revealed that the gap in racial preferences far exceeded initial assumptions, something that caught him by surprise. Analyzing the data, Artiti Akino discovered that universities such as Harvard and the University of North Carolina don't just use race as a determining factor in their admissions process. Legacies, children of alumni, athletic ability, and whether applicants' parents were potential donors also served as key indicators in the admissions decisions. Surprisingly, these factors leaned in favor of wealthier applicants, raising questions about the fairness of the process. Comparatively, objective measures, Dr. Peterson argued, though imperfect, are more reliable and valid than any other attempted alternative. Both agreed that any other system would generate much worse outcomes. Peterson also highlighted that historically, when objective testing was done away with, it led to two alternatives, dynasty and nepotism. Historically, objective tests were used to identify individuals with the ability to succeed academically and professionally, particularly from disadvantaged backgrounds. Arkidiakono's deep dive into Harvard's database showed that certain categories, like athletic preference, disproportionately favored white and legacy applicants. For example, Harvard's athletic rating showed white non-legacy applicants faring better than African-American and Hispanic students, which is a clear indication of bias. Both Peterson and Arcidiacono emphasized that the primary problem lies in the holistic approach to admissions that also obscenely favor the rich, which raises questions of the robustness and fairness of the process. Their discussion points towards the need for a merit-based admission system that eliminates biased preferences. This means moving towards the objective evaluations that have historically helped identify capable individuals who would otherwise be overlooked in a system marred with hidden prejudices and discrimination. Peterson and Arcidia Kono continued their discussion, further scrutinizing the university's use of subjective elements like athletic ability, legacy status, and racial preferences. Peterson argued that these measures are less accurate, potentially discriminatory, and typically beneficial to the more affluent students. He suggested that these undermine the meritocratic ideal the universities claim to uphold. Arcidia Kono revealed that universities like Harvard don't have ratings for areas other than athletics, leaving valuable talents untapped for influential spots. He suggested this might have roots in historical biases and that certain elements like athletics may have been originally devised to discriminate against Jewish students, a discrimination practice that might still be indirectly ongoing toward Asians. Furthermore, they question the basis of the current university admissions systems, which arguably lack strategic modeling and tend to favor students who will likely become wealthy alumni donors. Peterson stated that it's imprudent of universities not to make use of their own expertise available for improving their admissions policies. Arkady Okono added that universities seldom utilize the data acquired through various measures, thus losing potential insights for better policies. Narrowing down to the case of athletic preference, they observed how it potentially serves as a backdoor for wealthier families. Arkady Okono noted that over 16% of white admits at Harvard are recruited athletes, significantly higher than for other racial groups. This is largely due to the university's selection of sports associated with upper-class families. However, both stipulated the need for further research into how these admitted athletes fare in academic realms highlighting the risk of their underperformance, dropout, or demoralization under the academically rigorous programs. Additionally, they address the hierarchy in major disciplines where those at the bottom of the academic pool tend to switch out from more challenging areas like physics and mathematics, which necessitate higher cognitive abilities. It led to their recommendation for parents to place their children in institutions that challenge them without putting them at the bottom of the academic pool fostering both their talents and self-esteem. 
They particularly criticized the university's reluctance to make data-driven policy decisions in handling these issues. Peterson and Arcidia Kono delved into a deep discussion surrounding academic ability, disciplinary performance, and race. The host revealed that academic ability and disciplinary performance all significantly correlate with student dropouts, not one's racial background, implying that a student's performance can be accurately predicted by measuring their academic capabilities rather than race. They argued that inherent cognitive ability and test scores are more critical determinants of academic success than race, emphasizing that students who switched majors often did so due to the difficulty of their courses or feeling unprepared. They pointed out that once factors like SAT scores were accounted for, the racial gap essentially disappeared, suggesting that race in and of itself isn't a genuine predictor of academic failures or successes. In the discussion, Peterson and Arsidaya Kono expressed concern that the systemic racism narrative could overshadow the fact that test scores primarily reflect K-12 educational experiences, which could be enriching if improved upon. They criticized universities sacrificing the interest of hardworking students, particularly Asians, to uphold their multicultural appearance. Arkidia Kono noted that admitting students based on representational diversity instead of academic merit can lead to a disproportionately high failure rate. Despite this, both agreed that the lack of racial representation in higher institutions is problematic. Arkady Akono proposed focusing on addressing disparities prior to collegiate education, such as improving K-12 experiences as systemic solutions to the conundrum. As an example, he mentioned the work of Roland Fryer, who demonstrated the effectiveness of no excuse charter schools in reducing achievement gaps. Overall, they asserted that by disregarding inherent cognitive ability in favor of perceived racial bias, universities undermine their merit-based ideals and contribute to a systemic failure in providing quality education to all students equally. Dr. Jordan Peterson and Dr. Peter Arcidiacono continue their in-depth discussion on the impact of race and academic ability on education. Peterson explores the complex issues of interventions in children's households, especially those addressing antisocial behavior before the age of two. He highlighted the fine line between beneficial guidance and potentially invasive oversteps into family dynamics. Citing examples from India, Peterson highlighted how parental engagement, especially communication with children, was not always intuitive. Noting as well the gaps in pre-literacy experiences between households, Peterson showed that while parents' aspirations for their children may be high, inadequate knowledge regarding pre-literacy activities could leave children unprepared for school. This disparity between parental intention and action points to the need for informed support and interventions. Arcidia Kono also stressed the need for trust in education systems, citing an example dedicated to racial matching of doctors and patients. He revealed that black patients were more likely to follow health instructions from a black doctor. This trust gap, Arcidia Kono argued, needed to be bridged for effective dissemination of information and advice across racial lines, including in education. Peterson then mentioned the Head Start program, an initiative designed to provide an academic boost to kids before they enter school. The hope was that this would give disadvantaged kids an advantage in school and help close the achievement gap. However, the results showed no lasting effect on cognitive performance. While the program did show some improvements in social behavior and finished schooling, the promise of improvement in cognitive skills and subsequent academic success was not realized. The causes were myriad, perhaps an employment program disguised as an education initiative or simply the limitations of teaching three-year-olds. But the result was a failure to address core academic issues. Touching base on a recent Supreme Court case involving university admissions, Arcidia Kono discussed how affirmative action in school applications was ruled as discriminatory. The ruling stated that race could only be considered in the context of a student's experiences rather than as a primary deciding factor. This caused a shift in the University of California school system where SATs were no longer required for applications, overseen as a way to divert from race-based admission decisions. With a deep dive into these topics, Peterson and Arcidia Kono emphasized the complexity and contentious nature of race and education. 
highlighting failures, misconceptions, and potential ways forward for a more equitable future. In this continued conversation with Dr. Peter Arcidiacono, Dr. Jordan Peterson delves deep into the statistical observations around racial biases in academic admissions, particularly focusing on Harvard University. They discuss the complexity of maintaining objective fairness in the application process and the potential pitfalls of affirmative action. Dr. Peterson raises an interesting issue about how personal biases can influence the interpretation of data. In response, our city Kono admits there's potential for this, but emphasizes he sets a high bar for his conclusions due to the contentious nature of his work. He notes that he has published five peer-reviewed papers, implying this rigor reduces the chance of personal bias influencing his findings. The focus then shifts to Harvard's admission system. Our city Kono talks about how Harvard's internal research team found a significant penalty against Asian American applicants while also discovering a systemic favor towards low-income students within the same model. This double standard presented in Harvard's interpretation of their own model suggests an inclination to support results that align with their preferences. In response to the Supreme Court ruling, our city Kono observes that universities, including Harvard, expressed disappointment publicly while asserting their unchanged commitment to diversity. There is an implication here that universities might resort to covert practices to maintain their desired diversity levels despite the ruling. Peterson raises concern about potential future liability for universities should they continue with these practices post-ruling. Our city Kono agrees, pointing out that Harvard's consistent diversity levels, despite claimed changes, would need some explanation, indicating potential subversive practices. Finally, our city Kono suggests universities should lean towards more objective tools for selection, such as standardized test scores. He acknowledges this isn't a perfect solution, as top-ranking universities often deal with a deluge of high-scoring applicants, making the process still complex and challenging. The insightful conversation delves even deeper as Dr. Peterson and Dr. Arcidi Akino explore the impact of varying levels of academic performance on university selection. Arcidi Akono highlights that despite the seemingly small numerical difference, the variance between a student scoring in the 95th percentile and one in the 99th percentile is in fact quite significant. This part of the discussion focuses on the fine-grained differentiation at the upper end of the performance spectrum. Dr. Jordan Peterson shares insightful knowledge about how these minor differences substantially influence outcomes in academic performance and potentially one's career path. Dr. Arcidecano points out the limitation of current testing methods, arguing that they are too easy to discern the truly exceptional students. In response, Dr. Peterson accentuates the need to develop more challenging testing standards to make a clear distinction at the topmost level of academic performance. Further examining the impact of the Supreme Court ruling, their conversation steers towards the likely responses from universities. Dr. Peterson shares his suspicions about some institutions possibly resorting to alternative, potentially covert practices to maintain diversity levels. However, he reiterates his belief that fair objective testing models are the ideal solution to address this issue appropriately. Dr. Peterson highlights the possibility for institutions to provide candidates with a probability percentage of their success in a specific discipline based on their academic performance. This idea aims to optimize student university match, promoting a higher chance of academic success for the student. Towards the end, the complexities of affirmative action are brought to light, pointing out its potential to increase the diversity of graduate students. Despite this, its implementation also raises concern about its counterproductive effects, such as casting doubt on the competence of truly qualified individuals. In closing, the dialogue urges support for platforms like Daily Wire Plus, which encourage free, open, and uncensored discussion on pressing issues. This segment encapsulates an enriching discussion designed to shed light on key issues in the sphere of education, providing multiple perspectives on a heated topic. Check out the full podcast by clicking the link in the description below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for listening to this podcast summary episode of the Pod Slice 